so glad that you're here with us sharing this time together. We're going to get started with a song. The most wonderful thing about life is that you can always begin again. No matter what ups and downs you are handed in life today, you can always begin again tomorrow by Mendoza. And actually, I would modify that. You can begin again every moment. You don't have to wait 24 hours, right? Every moment we can begin again. Let's join together in prayer as we come together. One heart, one soul. Letting go of any distractions, letting go of any uh, anxiety that might, might be lingering and trying to find that parking spot. Just being present here now. Centering in love. Centering in peace. Recognizing that there is only one presence and this presence is goodness itself, flowing through each one here, each one around the world. And so it is. Amen. And now if you'll join me in our mission statement together, Unity of Town, a welcoming community 
embraces spiritual awakening through affirmative prayer and meditation, creating a positive path of abundant living for all. And now we'll have the reading of the Daily Word with Arnie. Good morning, everyone. Animal blessing. I recognize the divine. The, yeah, let's get this out of my tongue tied here. I recognize the divine essence in all living creatures. I bless my pets and all animals with thoughts of love and appreciation. I show my gratitude by treating them with love and kindness, being responsive to their needs and helping to maintain a safe environment for them to thrive. Let's Pets bless me with unconditional love and devotion. They may be part of my family or those of friends and relatives. My life is richer because of them. Wild animals bless me too through their beauty and diversity. I enrich myself by appreciating the animals of the air, land, and sea. Each creature expresses the glory of God in its own unique way. Genesis 1 and 25, God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that was good. So let's meditate on the blessing up, up on the screen and say it together. I bless and appreciate all animals. Hold that in your heart space. One more time to affirm, I bless and appreciate all animals. Thank you, Arnie. And this is the day in which we are blessing animals. And we have some animal friends with us today. We have Nacho, we have Jack Jack, and we have Milka. Okay, yes. Uh, and also, as you can see, we have some pictures that were sent in from animals who are living amongst us. <laughs> So we're going to take a moment to bless, just to remind you, is really to center ourselves and uh, bring the animal friend into your heart and see the goodness that is there. Just uh, allow appreciation for that animal to come and just sending love, surrounding that animal with love. So let's do that now with the animals that are here. We're bringing Jack Jack. Nada, Nacho, all into our hearts. We see them thriving. We see how beautiful they are. We see the, the companionship that they give those whom they live with. And we bless the animals that are keeping company with other members and attendees of this spiritual community. And we give thanks for their companionship, for their unconditional love. And we see them surrounded in light and love. And let's expand this blessing to include the animals all over the world. The great diversity, the wonders that they are, appreciating them, loving them. And so it is. Amen. <coughs> we have an opportunity to greet our neighbor now. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say too much, but just handshake, hug, or howdy, or namaste, your choice. Just make it evident, and we'll, we'll gather back together with the song that comes. Okay. And then if you want to say hello to Facebook friends, um, I, you could probably stand right here. Is that good, Arnie? Perfect. Okay, and just say hello, or just wave, whatever you want to do. And um, before... Before we let you go, I just want to invite the Facebook friends to write in the comment section uh, a note of welcome to each other and any prayer requests that you may have to. Okay. 
Okay, let's greet our, our friends. Yes, ma'am. <laughs>
All my sisters and I were expected to kneel down and pray now I lay me down to sleep before bedtime every night. The prayers at the mainstream church that my family attended, which was really the social hub for our family, were always scripted and I, I didn't feel connected to them at all. So as a teenager, I went to another church, a, a, a Baptist church, and this, the prayers there felt heart-centered and, some, and moving somewhat until I began to question theology a little bit. So when I started attending Unity, I remember the first time someone asked me to pray aloud. I'm like, no, <laughs> not me, <laughs> but I did. And I didn't know what to say, I didn't know how to say it, I didn't, I didn't know. So I quoted Thich Nhat Hanh. Mm -hmm. wow. Breathing in, I relax my body. Breathing out, I smile. Living in this present moment, I know this is a wonderful moment. That was my prayer. And I still think it works as a prayer because it's so beautiful, right? But it really wasn't until I took a, a prayer class, a class on affirmative prayer, that I began to grasp what it was and how it can change one's life. So today we're going to have an overview of affirmative prayer. And as the weeks go through along, we'll, we'll dive a little bit more into the steps on the how-tos, the nuts and bolts, because I have shared before how prayer has cha made changes in my life. You know, and just to recap a few, um, I, quitting smoking. And that was many years ago, but the affirmative prayer absolutely helped me do that. Um, <clears throat> healthier life, living. As a community, affirmative prayer got us this space. I truly believe that, right? So, so affirmative prayer, we're going to start with what it is not, first of all. So first of all, it's not supplication or pleading or bargaining with God to do something, to do something that we want. It's not that. It's not asking for God's forgiveness or for God's grace. It's not asking for a particular outcome at all. And from the book, uh, Morrissey and Witsack tells us, prayer, affirmative prayer is not manipulating or coercing people or events to bring about personally desired change. It is not attempting to reach God. God is here always accessible. We don't have to try to reach God. God is always present. It's not persuading God to change his mind. First of all, God is beyond gender. Or suspend universal laws on our behalf. It's not putting our own willpower into changing the condition. It's not surrendering in the conventional meaning of the word. Giving up um, control and handing the situation to an external force. That's what surrender conventionally means. It's not denying that we as humans experience illness or pain or suffering. It's not trying to say that we don't. We do. That's part of the human experience. And it doesn't disallow other forms of healing. It's not attempting to exert spiritual control on the physical universe. And it's not thinking that the one who's doing the praying is doing the healing. Okay, so that's what it is not. So affirmative prayer is a shift in our consciousness. What Seth tells us, shifting from supplicating to affirming. We let go of the thought of the divine as a separate being with a human-like personality. It's a shift from powerlessness to empowerment. From a God who as a deity takes action to a God as the power and presence of the universe. To a shift from duality with God up there and me down here to the idea of oneness. Affirmative prayer helps us to claim and activate the spiritual powers that we have been given, that we all have within us so that we might more fully embody our divine nature. In other words, that we might bring heaven here on earth, heaven, that, that state of consciousness from our higher self and into our daily lives. From the book, let me just read a little bit, affirmative prayer is 
consciously clearing away false beliefs to reveal the truth that is always there. The truth of our being, that you are love, you are loved, you are loving. And so much more than that, too. That's just an example. Affirmative prayer allows us to realize and declare the spiritual truth about ourselves and the spiritual truth about the condition for which we are praying, seeing beyond the temporary to the absolute. Affirmative prayer allows us to become still and know that God is, and letting that reality be felt so clearly that we can realize and declare the spiritual truth in any situation. It is surrendering in the sense that we give up our human perspective for our higher self perspective. Affirmative prayer is also realizing that we are human and divine and that there's a perfect spiritual idea of truth held in divine mind for every individual, no matter what they are experiencing, and this truth can be declared and realized. Eric Butterworth, the Unity Minister, said, prayer is not something we do to God, but to ourselves. It is not a position, but a disposition. It is not flattery, but a sense of oneness. It is not asking, but knowing. It is not words, but feeling. It is not will, but willingness. So, affirmative prayer, as the name implies, uses affirmations. And we use affirmations with the daily word on Sunday, and usually sometimes interspersed throughout the service as well. An affirmation is a simple statement of spiritual truth. Okay, that's important to realize. It's because sometimes when we think of affirmations, we think of Stuart Smalley from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> you know, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone people like me. <laughs> okay, some people got it, that's good. <laughs> and while these may be true, or they may be wishful thinking, with, a, with a, a spiritual affirmation, we want to go deeper to who we are at our core, who we are as a spiritual being, who we are as the expression of love and light. So they speak of who we are as all of that and more. So they're not wishful thinking, but rather they are tools that we can use to um, help us remember Help us shift our perspective. Help us remember those qualities of the divine that we all have within us. You could also call them mantras. I hear that used often. It's the same thing, I believe. Um, mantras, it literally means mind training. And that's what we're doing. We're training the mind to remember who we are. So we no longer think of separation. Or we no longer think of limitation. But of oneness and of, of, of abundance. So here is an example of an affirmation. Let's say this together. I am an expression of divine love. And just take that in. In fact, you know, let's say it again with our hand on our heart because we want to cultivate the feeling for this. Together, I am an expression of divine love. And just breathe that in and let that love blossom from your heart and expand out into this room. I am an expression of divine love. Okay, so that is how, in the moment, if you're angry with someone, you can shift your, your attitude immediately with that affirmation. Just a small example. Now, our elder brother Jesus, he used affirmations. Yes, he did. The Father and I are one. I mean, how much, how much more can you talk about one than that? The Father and I are one beautiful thing. So affirmations open us up to possibilities as they help us recognize God is and I am we are. They help us to shift beyond limiting thoughts into realizing spiritual power. And as I said, we'll get into this 
a little bit more in depth as we continue on with this series. But for now, I wanted to read or share with you an article from the Daily Word magazine. Uh, it was a while back, written by Linda Ann. This is on the power of a permanent prayer. I thought it was wonderful, actually. So. For many years, I struggled with self-doubt, emotional pain, childhood family problems, betrayal, and deep depression. To make a long story short, I had tried many things and had been given much advice to no avail. I had been in a state of life-altering depression for three years when a booklet from Unity arrived in my mail. I hadn't gone to church for many years, but occasionally read Daily Word and other Unity pamphlets. None had ever moved me as this one did. This particular booklet gave me a glimmer of hope with phrases like, God's will is for you to have right companionship. God's will is for you to have your heart's desire. God's will is for you to be happy. Happy? What is that? My life had been a series of ups and downs, and the downs were more prominent than the ups. I read this booklet again and again. Slowly, the message began to sink into my foggy heart and mind. I made up my mind that no matter how depressed I became, how confused, fearful, or insecure, I would begin to practice affirmative prayer. Prior to this, my prayers had been, please God, get me out of this mess. And I would then forget about God until the next mess. In desperation, I set out to see if positive prayer would bring forth a new life as promised. So each dawn, I would arise, sit on my couch, affirming and listening, affirming and listening. After a while, I realized God was talking to me, and I began to heal. Thoughts would float into my mind, thoughts I had never heard before. I would take a thought and work with it, affirming it repeatedly until I realized in heart and mind that these truths were for me. They were of spirit. The prayers came from deep within, from the unconscious to the conscious. I could hardly believe this was happening. It was magical and heart-filling. My words and thoughts became reality, and my whole world changed. I opened to the good that had been waiting for me and is waiting for everyone. Through prayer, I am positive that truth will find us, that true healing and strength come from within, and that healing is possible through spirit by positive affirmation and awareness of our union with God. We are like hourglasses, with spirit filling us up, replacing the hurts and defeats of our past. There is a new world just waiting to be unveiled. So Linda found true healing with the realization of this union with God, with oneness with spirit. And this is the foundation for affirmative prayer, or as the book refers to it, the prime principle. From this prime principle, we can gather many other principles as to, uh, that are true as well. Oneness cannot be split or dual. It is whole always. And if nothing is outside of oneness, you cannot be separate from oneness. All are one, even as the one may be experienced and understood in infinite ways. So we're talking about omnipresence, right? not centralized in a single location, everywhere present. That means it's present within each of us. It's present within everybody we see, every, everywhere we look. The other ohms that go with this, omniscience, all knowledge is available to us. We have a, a, an inner well of wisdom from which we can draw upon. Omnipotence, all the power that is. We have within us an innate ability to call on this power to exercise spiritual authority. So in affirmative prayer, we use these qualities as well as others as well. Consciously remembering that God or the universe or spirit, whatever your name for the divine is, is good. Or I need to 
start shift. I, I, I am shifting from good to the idea of goodness. Because with the idea of good, we have our thoughts automatically go to the opposite, right? But this is goodness. Goodness with no opposite. There's no opposing. Emily Cady writes, God is not a being or a person having, having life, intelligence, love, power. God is that invisible, intangible, but very real something we call life. God is perfect love and infinite power. God is the total of these, the total of all goodness, whether manifested or unexpressed. So affirmative prayer, just to recap, leads us to express more of this goodness in our lives. Not by bargaining or pleading, but by affirming the truth of who we are. One last quote. To say that God, divine mind, or oneness is goodness does not mean that everything we see or experience in the relative world is good. It means that goodness and all the qualities and principles that arise from goodness, such as order, harmony, peace, and so on, are available and accessible at every moment regardless of the situation. They are there for us to call upon. So, it's all based on this idea of oneness. God's presence everywhere, within us, yes. So we're going to move into a time of meditation with this idea. I invite you to get comfortable in your seats, adjusting position as necessary. And begin paying attention to your breath. Letting your body relax. Letting your thoughts slow down. Letting any worries or concerns be set aside. Becoming present to this moment. We begin with this idea of goodness. Goodness everywhere present. And I invite you to think of the goodness in your life. It could be family and friends. It could be a beloved pet. It could be a nice warm place to stay, food to eat. Beauty in your yard, the ability to see all this goodness. And then let us turn within to the goodness that we is found there. The peace that passes all understanding. love that is ever present. The harmony that we can call upon. The life that we are living. This goodness is available to us every moment of every day as we go within and call upon it. So as we move into a period of silence, I invite you to do exactly that. <clears throat> Thank you. 
calling upon the love and the peace that are there, allowing them to blossom forth within you. And you can do this with a simple affirmation. I am peace. the silence, I invite you to use that affirmation as an anchor to stay focused and as a vehicle to deepen the meditation. As we bring this time of meditation to a close, if you like, you can continue to sit restfully, or you can join in this beautiful song by Brent Patty.
which if, you, if you're interested, come on up and look at the book after the service. That happens Wednesday for the next five Wednesdays, out, Wednesday, I think five or six Wednesdays afterwards, except for the sound bath Wednesday. So that's at 6 p.m. Please sign up if you're going to attend so we have enough food. Okay, and then Knitting for Love. 
which is the prayer shawl ministry, at 1 p.m. on this coming Friday at Amy Manette's house. If you're interested in joining us, or if you just want to have an afternoon of knitting together and a um, wonderful conversation, I encourage you to come. And Sunday, next Sunday, one of my favorite things. <laughs> yeah, Dances of Universal Peace, right? I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but it's a circle dance. They use sacred chants and sayings and quotes to really embody them as a prayer. But we do have a potluck as well beforehand. So I hope you can come to the potluck and stick around for the Dances of Universal Peace. Fantastic thing. There's flyers for this. Um, suggested donation, $10 to $15. There's live music. Kathy Palmer has been facilitating these dances for many years and has agreed to bring them here at EMT. So let's, let's enjoy that. It's going to be good. Tuesday, uh, the 15th, which is ne not this week, but next week, anybody interested in being a part of youth and family ministry planning? This meeting does not obligate you to do anything other than let's come up with some ideas and some discernment as to what is ours to do moving forward. Okay, and that will be on Zoom. The Zoom link is in the newsletter, the email newsletter. And then Thursday, our Men of Unity meeting at 6 p.m. If you haven't yet come, men, come. I know you'll be welcome. I know you will. And you'll enjoy it too, I'm pretty sure about that, right, Oni? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. uh, St. Mark's is having a cleanup day. I think they're going to be uh, spreading mulch down this Saturday, the 26th. I don't have a time yet. Uh, usually it's in the morning, probably around 10 ish or so, maybe a little bit earlier if you could come and help them. We are uh, contracted to help them for at least four times a, a year. So uh, if we can all show up, even if you don't want to do mulch, you can maybe wash the windows on the outside, whatever. There's plenty to do to, to spruce up this place, okay? And if you're able to help move the chairs after the service for our yoga, that would be delightful and, I, and greatly appreciated. And this beautiful quilt that we've been gifted is going to be raffled off. No, it's a silent auction. <laughs> Silent auction, which ends uh, the end of the last Sunday of this month. So get your bids in. <laughs> Don't try to buy a raffle ticket. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, our women's retreat. Uh, we, all the bedrooms are full, but we might be able to, if you're still interested, we might be able to have you share a room with somebody. Or you can always come just for the day on Saturday. Flyers are out in the um, foyer as well. This is always a wonderful time of women connecting together and really having that time of retreat apart from the world with some prayers and meditation, a little bit of music perhaps, and just connection and communion. Okay, so with that said, it's going to say goodbye to our Facebook friends. We're so happy that you joined us and YouTube friends as well. And I um, hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you again soon.